IIT 1999 and this is about uh, rotations okay it's a great problem so take your time read the problem let's solve it a cylinder which has a mass m1 and we have a plank which is kept on top of that and that has a mass m2 and it's being pushed this way the force f and you have a you have a surface which has some friction both surfaces have friction and it's given that these things are going to accelerate now but without any slipping that's the thing and we need to calculate the acceleration of the center of mass of this guy the acceleration of the plank and we also need to calculate what the magnitude of the frictional forces are so let's do that okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna uh, write equations using Newton's second law and torques and angular momentum not angular momentum torque equation f equals ma tau equals I alpha these are the two equations we will use we'll use it for this fellow separately and then we'll do it for this guy separately I think we can do it for two separately and do it so let's see okay if I do it for this guy cylinder it has some radius I forgot does it have a radius yes it has some radius r some radius r but I think that's not going to matter anyways it has mass m1 and some radius r and what direction are going to be the frictional forces over here take a moment to think about it did you do it well here's the thing you can choose any direction you want <laughs> that's the beauty of this okay so let me just choose I, I feel the friction on this guy is going to be this way let's call it as friction f1 and I feel the friction over here is going to be backwards I, I really don't like to think too much because I'm, I'm confident in Newton's laws and I know that if I made a mistake here I'll get negative signs so I really don't care about that and there's going to be a gravitational force acting downwards and there's going to be a normal force acting upwards but these guys are not going to produce any torque relative to the center of mass so I'm fine with just two equations and in the vertical there are no accelerations so if I apply Newton's second law to this guy this fellow Newton's second law I will get uh, net force must be equal to mass times acceleration of the center of mass so ACM net force uh, there are two forces I'll take right side as positive so there is F1 minus F2 must be equal to M1 times A of CM therefore the acceleration of the center of mass must be F1 minus F2 divided by M1 okay you must be wondering why haven't I substituted the values for F1 and F2 remember that whenever you're dealing with static friction the static friction need not always be maximum value it can be any value between 0 and mu s into n so we don't know what these values are in fact we have to figure it out all right so that's a classic rookie mistake which many people do static friction is self adjustable remember that so we have one equation that connects the center of mass now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say another equation and the other equation is going to be the torque equation tau relative to the center of mass sigma tau that should be equal to I relative to the center of mass into alpha who are the people who are producing torque I'm gonna to call this as positive torque uh, that's that's clockwise I will take clockwise f1 is producing torque and that's going to be f1 times r f2 is also producing torque in the same direction that's going to be f2 times r and that will be equal to moment of inertia of the cylinder it's a solid cylinder well that's just m m1 r square by 2 times alpha so from this we can calculate what alpha is alpha turns out to be 1 r cancels so you have f1 plus f2 into 2 divided by m1 into r that's equation number 2 for us so this is alpha and since there are no slippings and no slidings or whatever it should obey one more rule and the rule is the acceleration of the center of mass must be equal to r times alpha this is true because let me not put a box on it it's not our result it's it's a condition it's a constraint that we have over here this is because there is no slipping no slip therefore we can now figure out what's the condition for these guys 
F1 minus F2 divided by M1 should be equal to R times 2 into F1 plus F2 divided by M1R. R cancels, M1 cancels, and we now have a condition for frictional forces. They have to be 2 and 2, F1 plus F2. Therefore, F1 minus F2 equals 2, F1 plus 2, F2. And um, I'll bring this on this side, I'll bring this on that side. So F1 minus 2 F1, that is minus F1. And that's going to be equal to 2 F2 plus F2, that is 3 F2. Okay, this is an important equation for us. So we have an equation that connects the two frictional forces. We need one more equation and that we're going to do by, by solving for this fellow. But anyways, think about it guys. I'm getting one as the negative of the other which means either this one is wrong or that one is wrong. So one of the directions are correct but the other one is wrong. That's what I told you. Okay, now here is the key. The question is, what do you think is going to be the acceleration of the plank? Well, remember. This point over here, let me call that as point A. That point, the point of contact, it's going to keep changing as the plank moves over it. But at any moment of time, the point of contact and the slide must be accelerating together. Therefore, because there is no slipping. So whatever is the acceleration of the point of contact, this point A, should be the acceleration of the plank. So acceleration of the plank, I'm gonna write that over here and then I'm gonna move on to the next page. So acceleration of the plank, so I'm just gonna call this PL that should be equal to acceleration of this point A but acceleration of the point A is just going to be two times the acceleration of this remember rolling motion revise you need to revise uh, rolling motion if you don't remember this whenever something is rolling purely pure roll no slipping no sliding you will always find at the top the velocity is twice that of the the velocity of the center of mass similarly the acceleration at that point will be twice that of the acceleration of the center of mass. And it can be very easily derived. See, this, this gets an acceleration of the center of mass, plus it gets an additional acceleration of this one. Okay, so you just do that. Anyways, it's going to be two times the acceleration of the center of mass, and that's going to be two times F1 minus F2 divided by M1. All right, so this is the acceleration I'm going to use for this guy and get second equation. Okay, so now I have accelerate. So here's a plank. And I'm pushing it this way. It has a mass m2. And I know what the acceleration of the plank is. That is 2 times f1 minus f2 divided by m1. The whole thing, the whole thing divided by m1. Okay, now let's do equations for this guy. How many forces are acting on this? Well, there's one force, F, and there's a frictional force acting on this fellow. Remember, this frictional force, action, action equals minus reaction, so the plank is pushing it forward with F1, so he pushes the plank backwards with the same F1. So this must be F1. Therefore, if I apply Newton's second law, sigma net force must be equal to mass times acceleration of the plank. Net force is, I'm going to take right side as positive. So F minus F1 must be equal to M2 times uh, 2 into F1 minus F2 divided by M1. Ooh, notice I have a second equation. And I can now eliminate one of the frictional forces from, friction, from equation number 1. Let me just write down that equation somewhere at the side minus F1 equals 3 F2. So this was our one first equation. Okay, now I don't need this paper. So let me substitute for F1 here. Or should I substitute, oh, I will substitute for F1. So I'll get F minus plus 3 F2. Turns out to be equal to M2, 2 here, into F1, which is minus 3 F2, minus F2 divided by M1. Now, I can solve this, I can solve this for F2, so let's be a little bit careful and do it. So F plus 3, from here onwards is just 
plain old algebra. I'm going to take that minus sign outside. So plain old algebra divided by m1 into 4 f2. Bring this on this side. Is there space downstairs? No, I'm going to write it over here. So f equals minus 2 m2 by m1 into 4 f2 minus 3 f2. I'm going to put the minus sign on this side. Okay, and there's an 8 m2 by m1 f2 plus 3 f2 okay let's isolate what f2 is so it's going to be f2 times 8 m2 plus 3 m1 i'm gonna pull the m1 down and i have now f2 as minus m1 f divided by 8 m2 plus 3 m1 Ta da! That is F2. I found it in terms of what it is given to me. Once I do this, everything is done because now immediately I can calculate what F1 is. And F1 is going to be just three times this value with a negative sign. So, can I write it over here? I think I can. Let me, let me do that. So, F1 is going to be three times just three times this value and we lose the negative sign so it's going to be three times m1 f divided by 8 m2 plus 3 m1 okay so our f1 was correct that means this guy is in the correct direction but this guy is actually the wrong direction it should have been this way now come to think of it that makes sense well you see if there was no friction over here, then the bar would just slide this way. To avoid the bar from sliding this way, this fellow is going to ask this bar to, you know, not slide. So he's going to try and make sure it doesn't slide. So it makes sure that the frictional force on the plank will be this way. And on the other hand, this guy says, hey, cylinder, come along with me. And therefore, the frictional force over here will be this way. Now, notice, the moment the frictional force comes over here, the cylinder will try to roll. And since the cylinder will try to roll, this part will start to try to go backwards. And since the ground doesn't want this thing to go backwards, ground, you know, friction tries to avoid relative motion, the ground says, hey cylinder, I don't want you to slip here, so I'm going to push forward. And that's why the frictional force will be in the forward direction. But like I said, that's okay, we don't have time to do all this thinking when you're solving an IIT problem. Anyways, now since we have F1 and F2, we can just substitute in these, this equation and Two times this equation and you can get the answer of acceleration of the center of mass and the acceleration of the plank which is going to be just two times the acceleration of the center of mass so i'm pretty sure you can do that yourself because it's direct substitution we have now solved this this particular problem see you next time